Mr. Modi's speech, it's a question I've been putting to all the Indian business leaders here. Did you think he struck the right note for the country? I think he did. I think he gave a very statesmanlike speech, which talked about the state of the world, addressed the very theme of the of the annual meeting of a fractured world and how to bring it together. And he brought in India as, as a force of good for this country. And not good today, good for millions of millennia. So from that point of view, I think he brought in a very large perspective of a global play that India has in the world. But if you notice, several times he made references to being a democracy, which is not just a question of votes, it's a question of, of philosophy, a way of doing things. I, in directly comparing to China, that mm. we are a different kind of force. We are a force for good, we are a force for democratic nature. We can talk to us, we can talk to you. We aspire for the best of our, even the smallest people, the poorest. So I think uh, I, I was quite happy to hear him speak like that uh, and speak at a global level on a global scale, sure. yeah. okay. which is, which is, I think, was very important. Okay. Now let me come to questions about the economy and infrastructure and how, you know, what 2018 is going to turn out to be like uh, from an India point of view vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world. Are you feeling more confident that this will be a year of growth and investment or do you still think that all the issues that plagued the infrastructure sector for the last three or four years continue in 2018? See, there has been an increase in spend of on infrastructure. Government led. Substantially in, in transportation. Right. Roads and metros. Hmm. Substantially. Yeah. But there's some backlog of hydro that got created, so there's something has come out there. Then on irrigation, some states are doing very well. At that. And, but other than that, there is no private investment no, of any, any mentionable nature happening. The second important thing is that even on the infrastructure, we are doing these big roads and we're talking about it now. I think we need a little purpose in this as to what this infrastructure will do for us. Like even the the bullet train or the Shinkansen or the fast train that we talk about. It at least talks about going to Ahmedabad in two hours. Mm. You can start imagining all the good it can do. Mm. Or going to Delhi in six hours. But how and then the technology that you will deploy will pull up other technologies. So all this is not going to happen overnight, but it has that potential, it has hmm. that force. And c comprehension of what is this for? When you talk about Mala connecting, India has been talked about during the quadrangle, etc. So we need a little more purpose in what we are doing. Hmm. How we need to create a policy at the central level in each state. What is our new system for moving goods and people around the country efficiently? And when you base it on that, you might have some different answers on how you will build it, how you will do that. So it will still continue to be a finan financially... i give you one example. I, for example, would have played for more limited access highways. Hmm. And to solve India's problem of multi speed and multi level vehicle traffic on the road. We have to spend that extra on either side of this limited access for such vehicles. The reason being, if you can turn around a truck to Delhi back in 36 hours, as compared to the eight, nine days it takes, you are going to change the cost of transportation. There's a the cost of transacting business between the two cities, let's begin there. However, it takes the same time as you made a four-lane road than it took as a two-lane road. Yeah. Because you're behind times. Yeah. You should have built a four-lane 30 years ago. So these are some of the eye changes I would like to see as a as having a more mission, more clarity of why we are doing this. On a more shorter to medium term basis, will this year be as financially challenging as the last few have been? See, last year happened to have too many disruptions straight away. And uh, I've noticed one thing, whether it's business or whether it is broadly people, they acclimatize to what happens, which is true, adapt, 
yet they never really can fully comprehend what this will bring upon them. Because there's not enough education on what the country stands for, what its laws mean, what this tax differentiation means. So when a disruption like this happens, it shakes everybody. And yes, there have been problems. I think the... Uh, the Are you talking about demonetization? No, I'm talking about GST. GST. Oh, no, I'm not even talking about GST as much as I'm talking I'm about problems plaguing the infrastructure sector outside of... I'm just trying to me. say uh -huh. to okay, okay, okay. this GST plagues us. Uh, no, no, I know, I know. I'm not yeah. suggesting it doesn't, but I, I don't mean that that's the bigger of your problem. No, so if these are, these are some of the... So they are disruptive. Even, let's say, you are just simple... 10% one tax for everything. I made it simple. Even then it would be disrupted. Mm. This has therefore multiplied the disruption. So the impact of that disruption is not going to go away. Mm. So I think this year also will be a troublesome year. And people will talk of green shoots. Mm. Which have you noticed? Green shoots is usually confirmed only a few days later when there are many more around. Till then, the green shoots are in the eyes of the optimist. So I think. So you're not seeing any. I'm not seeing that much improvement. But okay. I've seen some kind of a investment push has started. People are feeling, let's invest here. But I've not seen a palpable investment out there. Let's see how it goes. It should be since the disruptions were caused last year and they came in a suddenness. Maybe this year the stabilization might improve things. Okay. But you have the ogre of higher oil prices. Yeah, and rates, uh, interest rates also that look like they might trend higher, even trend if they higher. don't. Yeah. See, there again, it's difficult to comprehend <laughs> RBI. I, I can say this for sure. For 10 years now, I've heard you say that you think that the Reserve Bank of India I, is at much higher rates. I just met Raghu. <laughs> uh, uh, I just met Raghu, Raghu just now. Uh. And, I've had this argument with Raghu. Raghu was, I said, Raghu, you do your job. I, as industry, have to tell the people and demand what is good for us. A stable, low interest regime always helps investment in growth. Because at high interest rates, the returns required to cover the cost of capital is so high. A very few businesses. Mr. Gulachan, I, I, I'm not at all disagreeing with you, and I've learned not to get into the interest rate debate. Not that I have a different point of view yeah. uh, on this at all, but I have one one quick last question, and that is on the stressed assets front. Yeah. Uh, you were trying to resolve, no, you know, no, some wait, pieces. I forgot. Yeah. When you asked yeah. me, why do you think this year there won't be? Yeah. There's still that big issue of the banking and stressed assets. Hmm. Uh, we have now brought in a new law, which was required for a long time. The bankruptcy, code, yeah. which is how uh, it should have existed long ago. In its construction, it, in its construct itself, it has some flaws, which will be corrected as well. Over time, yeah. It may not get corrected because the Indian bureaucrat wants more control. But the fact is that this is also disruptive because it suddenly come. If this law had been in place 10 years ago, Maybe some of the stress assets wouldn't have happened. But now it's here, so... No, 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 no. no. Don't just say it. If you want to solve a problem or you just want to paper over it and say, is this going to go away? <laughs> then it's going to go away someday. I'm not papering over any of it. So I'm, I'm telling I'm you, therefore, now that it has come in, disruptive as it is, it's one part of the solution. But still, so banks are not good. deciding. The banks are going to bankruptcy, taking companies to bankruptcy, not because that is necessarily the solution, but because they want somebody else to decide on hackers. So there we have got to understand the fear of the banker on this goal. And if you can address that, there will be more sensibility in what to go there and what should go to bankruptcy and what should be resolved even without bankruptcy. Where are you on the Lavasa project, sir? Lavasa project... There was restructuring going on, right? There was restructuring. Then s It was passed. No, 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 no not s in your case, sorry. No, yeah, not in no, Lavasa. No. s okay. was it's it's no, it's yeah. not, not in Lavasa. It should, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's mm. coming out of its own. Day. So is that getting done? Where are we in those processes? It's done. Yeah, it's all over. So, 
part of the money is paid back. Okay, and the Vasa? And there is more uh, all of our arbitration claim awards which have come of 4,200 to 500 crores. So, and, 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 and Prime Minister Modi had promised that that would get done quickly. Yeah, so it's it happening takes, at a faster it pace? Takes, it always takes at a lower pace, still keeping some interest burden on cash flow. But, but that's the way we solve the problem. Okay. So never mind. And Lavasa? Lavasa, the banks promised. Then they implemented some of them. Then the rest backed out. And as a result, for two years, we were was in limbo. So what's going to happen now? So who's going to pay that interest? So, so you're in dispute? You're in dispute with them? Nobody is in dispute. We're trying to solve the problem differently. But now there's a bigger... See, bankruptcy code on one side. Some of the change have brought more sense to that we must solve this problem. We were, we were living in an ostrich-like way, so these problems would go away. Mm. They haven't, aren't going away, and you now know that, and you now feel solutions. But solutions, as we always do in our Indian way, is the way the solutions come. Ho jayega. Ho jayega. We leave it there. Kabi kabi. Thank you, sir, for stepping out into the cold, and thank you for a uh, great interview. Uh, we are now doing an interview. I think. Uh, well, have you met?